Hi everyone and welcome to week 5 uh, which is called building your project and if you see these emojis here there's gonna be a lot of creativity muscle power and <clears throat> work tools and also time involved in this uh, presentation so we're gonna see uh, today where are we in week 5 and where are we going the goals, the goals of the weeks are to learn to prioritize and scope releases, uh, plan and start running a sprint based on your defined priorities. We have also a tip here of how to scope sprints in weeks of two or four weeks. This is normally how it's done in software, but probably in hardware we might adjust some things, but at least it's good to try it. So this is the overview of uh, the validation process from generating your ideas to focusing on areas of your project that you want to prioritize and then do something about it by designing tests and then uh, this is what we have done <coughs> last week. We have focused on going from this uh, hypothesis extraction exercise to designing tests that you prioritize. So designing things that are important for you now. Um, so this week is going to be about, okay, you design those tests, you have a, a bunch of nice ideas related to your core uh, uh, priorities, hypotheses, things that you want to find out and validate. So then the next question is, how do you uh, work and get things done? So this Many of you have already a lot of experience because you have done already amazing things. But maybe it's nice to see some techniques and tools for getting things done using uh, agile methodology. So we're going to be focusing on this area of the process. Uh, and probably you saw this image before. Um, I'm just going to highlight some things. There's a lot of vocabulary here, but just keep in mind that we have been working on this side of your project and eventually we have also been doing tasks so things per week you can think of each week as part of a sprint or a little sprint if you like uh, so this is what we're going to be talking about today and of course we're also going to be talking about product roadmap which is related to product releases and let's see how we can yeah Make it so. The first challenge of this week is: uh, Can you plan a sprint of two to four weeks where your work, where you work only on a set of tasks with predictable outcomes? So, can you turn your ideas into predictable steps that are coherent with your strategy? And the challenge, the second challenge of the week is: Can you release an increment of your product in this two to four week sprint? Uh, so what does it take to do this uh, it's really a challenge and uh, I wanted to give you just an example of how I'm working in a certain project trying to apply scrum as well and I'm saying trying because you always are trying to make it better it's a very easy or simple methodology but it's also very let's say challenging to apply on teams so I wanted to give you an example of uh, a centrifuge we have been working on so this is the the first attempt of the centrifuge we did which is uh, is incomplete still it's not a it's not a it's not a finished product and we're still working on getting it finished but there's some documentation about building the circuit and doing the hardware itself uh, but it's not a release yet so I wanted to show you what is the current status now of the product and I wanted to first jump into uh, the this idea of product backlog which is basically uh, features of this product that we can separate <coughs> um, and let's say that we are we are working on version 1.0. I'm going to explain why we're working. We're basically working on version 
because we have worked on a zero point something. It means that it's something that is not ready, that is there's some content that can be used, but it's not really a product release as we would like. So we were thinking about calling this actual centrifuge uh, the first version 1.0. Um, so these are everything that you see in red called product backlog is nothing more than a, a feature. So we want the centrifuge to be 3D printable, so the design should be 3D printable, should be also should also be laser cuttable as well. We want to use an ESP uh, microcontroller programming programmable with MicroPython because it's an interesting uh, technology to work on. Um, so these are all things that requirements or let's say wish list that we want for this product in particular. Then we have uh, tasks. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, you want to go from product backlog to tasks. For instance, the ESP microcontroller controller feature involves programming the software, designing it. Uh, the, the new electronics would involve uh, designing the PCB. So this is an example of an issue that of Suryansh did, a uh, partner in the team, and he made a design for the centrifuge itself, for the PCB, uh, which is actually an increment of the previous uh, version we had. This is the, the previous version we were trying, and we wanted to make a PCB that makes the circuitry more compact. So this is what this issue is about. We now have the, currently we have the, the design and uh, we're just in the process of getting the parts to build the, the PCB. Uh, once we test the PCB, we then want to uh, see if, yeah, if everything works fine and then we uh, have a bill of material for this version 1.0. And now, for instance, Yanis is working on designing a new 3D printable casing, which involves doing certain stuff. You can actually go here and you might want to refer to uh, yeah to certain things related to your project uh, to to this particular issue but the the point of this basically is uh, that you want to translate your product backlog uh, features or ideas into um, tasks and things that you want to start progressing and have predictable outcomes. So if we look at the at this slide, I've been basically showing you a list of functionalities that we want to do and simple small tasks that we are running at the moment. Um, and this is related to this too, but if you think about it, we are mainly focusing on things that are predictable, things that you can measure and you can track. So what is the idea of, uh, let's talk a bit about Scrum, uh, so that you, yeah, see the process. The, the, the idea of, of Scrum is that you have a product backlog a list of features and things you want to do, bug fixes also. Uh, you can even have documentation uh, related, uh, uh, let's say, uh, logs in your backlog. But then the idea is that if you really want to follow this methodology is that you commit for two to four weeks to just a few backlog features. Uh, and you make an iteration and Hopefully, when you work in this backlog feature, you are releasing uh, a part of your product. So, let's say, let me give you an example. If I would finish the the PCB and would would test it and everything would be fine, I could say that I have a, a I could release a, a version of a, a zero point, let's say uh, one point one of this one because I did, I did a little increment and uh, I'm now talking about semantic version in which I'm gonna talk a bit about it now, but it means that it's a, an increment of this pro product or this project 
because people have a, 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 a part of the design that they can use and replicate, even if I don't have the casing finished. If I would have, uh, sorry, if I would have the the software, so the program tested and validated, in a, even with a simple, um, let's say, uh, with a simple breadboard, that would be another increment. So I would say 0 0.1.2. From 0 0.1.1 to 0 0.1.2. This is an example of an increment. Just to give you an example of. And when I, let's say, finish all these features, then I could say that I have version 1.0 finished because it has all the, the features that I that I had, that I co uh, wanted to commit to. So this is the, uh, the perspective of Scrum. And the idea is that you commit to these blocks or modules of work which might turn to be modules of functionality uh, to uh, make your process predictable. So I want to also highlight again, a backlog is, a, is basically an accumulation of uncompleted work or matters needed to be dealt with. So it's pretty simple. And a product backlog is a list of the new features, changes to existing features, bug fixes, infrastructure changes, or other activities that a team may deliver in order to achieve a specific outcome. The, the product backlog in Scrum is the single author, authoritative source for things that a team works on. So the idea is also that if you, have, if you follow this approach, everyone that is interested in your project should be looking at this and seeing what is happening if you're working open and they then know uh, and also the team know what is going on everything that is here or everything that is not here is not relevant to the project everything that is relevant to the project should be here ideally in this in this approach right so the idea with the sprint is i don't have here a sprint backlog log list but i could add a sprint backlog list i'm going to give you an example And uh, create project label. I'm going to create it. Spring backlog. And when I do this one, uh, I say, okay, create project label. Okay. So now it was created, and then I can put it here. So ideally, if you are working in a fast-paced team that uh, you want to have more, let's say, predictability in your process, you can say, okay, this is going to be in, in, in my spring backlog of one to four weeks. This one is definitely going to be here. And because it's a task, I'm going to put it already in the to-do list and this one as well. So this is an example, right? Uh, I'm I'm missing other things like for instance uh, website documentation website with with documentation and guides okay that's another feature of my of my open source project and I wanted to put it as a product backlog uh, and maybe something that is not going to be in the sprint backlog now because I don't want to do the website until I finish uh, the version 1.0, right? Uh, maybe I want to do this one first. So this hopefully gives you an idea about what to, yeah, how this uh, approach works. And maybe we can move forward. Uh, yeah, so... Remember that you have been working on things that are uh, relatively complex or uncertain, like how to engage your community or how to get your product outside. And you have to eventually turn that into predictable outcomes. So the idea of running tests and the test cards is to yeah, translate this into something that you can put in a spring backlog. So let's say in the context of validation you might also want to put it as a task like okay or in in a product backlog i say okay i want to validate this or you can even create a, a, a label for validation if you want to validate a requirement and you can also put it here as well so um 
yeah that, that that's uh, kind of the idea of what we have been doing so if you think about it every week we have been trying to trans to make you or encourage you to translate things into a kind of a spring backlog without you noticing that it's a spring backlog so the main takeaway perhaps of this process is that you want to go from a liquid to a solid state back and forth right i say that the liquid state here is related to crafting your vision in an open-ended process it always evolves and it's mainly about defining what is the right thing to do so you really want to make sure that you're hitting the proper requirements that you are focusing on for instance camilo from auto diy has a certain uh, idea that uh, uh, the, his pro, his product should be 3D printable and it should comply to certain requirements like being modular and stuff and he probably has a feeling that it's the right thing to do so that's something he has been validating uh, so this is basically the why area of your of your project now the solid state is where okay you have all this stuff what little steps you make to how do you Translate ideas into actions in a short-term oriented process. Focus on defining tasks and make ba baby steps, like so small steps. And this is about doing things right. So about managing pro your project in a, in a in the most efficient way. You might uh, you might have uh, a good grounded management system for your project, and that's me very interesting. It, it always takes you somewhere. Uh, but you might not be working uh, enough in this area so uh, you can also be the other way around you can have a proper uh, let's say vision of your pro product but you might want to improve on the how on how you do it on the mechanism or the mechanics the dynamics of your group and this is a continuous loop of growth and learning you want your team and your community to engage in this kind of uh, collective process of yeah uh, searching uh, for prop for a nice vision for your product and at the same time getting things done and you, you know uh, uh, making it happen realizing that so some of the key concepts that we have touched is product backlog uh, and spring backlog i forgot to wrote right here spring backlog time boxes and scope boxes so uh, the idea with the sprint is that you time box your your the features you want to work on and that you also commit to the things that you can only do during two to four weeks but also the another idea is that within doing this process you uh, start creating a self-organization process where everyone shares responsibility um, another important idea in scrum is that you do retrospective so during two to four weeks you make a reflection um, for instance in 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 the, in the running of this program we also have retrospectives where we talk about things we want to improve things that we shouldn't do uh, next time or next sprint and things that we want to start trying out for the next one so the overall idea is that this is that it is a very empirical learning based uh, process focus on on how you learn during the process not too much on the theory but also on, on the fact that you try to get better as a team together and uh, I put a link to the to the scrum core concepts because it's really interesting and it really can get you inspired as I've, i'm really inspired by by scrum especially with regard to to day-to-day -day work uh and yeah i would also like to go to a week assignments of week five the idea is to define redefine okay because you have already kind of defined it when you applied but you are defining today what is what scope of your product backlog if you like uh, you want to release in this program uh, can you prioritize your work based on feasibility relevance using 
the project board so try to use the project board in this kind of fashion as I demo it I use for this one GitLab because we are working with GitLab on that project but it's basically the same in GitHub uh, can you break down your test cards which might be you can consider the product backlog as a set of tasks that you can assign to people uh, maybe do you want to decide which of these ones do you want to uh, put on your sprint so ideally you first commit to a to a to a backlog uh, item and then you break down the tasks and the other thing is that if you have new ideas uh, you in this case I'm gonna I'm gonna point that if you have new ideas you should put them in the backlog but you shouldn't change the sprint backlog you should only work in the sprint backlog on those things that you said you were going to work because if you start putting new tasks uh, on your sprint backlog then probably you might run into the risk of not finishing everything you you wanted to do in the sprint backlog so this is a general question we ask okay at this time of the program do you have new things new insights uh, if you do you might want to uh, you might want to update your your canvas which is basically doing that but remember that this is something that you can do every three to six months every 12 to 14 24 months and you have to kind of keep this ladder uh, structured especially for your audience uh, so that you can also generate a kind of predictable uh, relationship with your community i hope this helps and i didn't get you too confused with the last item but if you have any question please let us know in the chat and yeah we are open to help you and support you good luck with this week and i hope to see you soon uh, yeah have a great fifth week thank you very much